No, I don't think there's point in dealing with kid it is as a beginner. Beginner I need to go. No to white word documents. Targeting with a full GDD is usually the wrong move. In most cases, writing a large document is just about the first way to do it. But you know, it is recommendation is actively harmful. So, my last video ignited a major debate. Not just about game design documents, but about what a small start in game development really looks like. Today, we are not just responding to comments. We are learning three critical lessons by exploring the common traps that beginners fall into. In the end of this video, I will ask you one question that could change how you start your very first game project. First, the trap of treating your game design document like it's a sacred, unchanging bible. A game design document isn't a set of laws. The concept has evolved. Today, you should think of it as a living document, an evolving blueprint. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but your first game probably won't make any money. But if you build a smart prototype that people love, you can and should go back and expand that GDD to design the game further. You test your ideas, you learn, and you edit the document. Having one organized source of truth will always be scattered scraps in a Discord channel. Second, the trap of massive scope. This is the number one momentum killer for new developers. When I showed my GDD template in my last video, some thought it was too much. My advice is, for your first project, answer each section in one single sentence. Keep it tiny. With experience, you will find that thinking through systems on paper helps you stay organized. But for your first game, your only mantra should be, keep it simple. A focused outline helps you think clearly and more importantly, stay moving. Finally, the trap of using planning as a form of procrastination. Drafting dozens of GDDs without ever opening an engine, that's procrastination. Instead, write one simple GDD for a short-term project. It's your pistol at the starting line. It's okay to dream about your Hollow Knight or your Balladrow, but then you have to start climbing the staircase one step at a time. And here is how you start climbing. To save your dream game, you have to practice on something else first. Instead of tackling your magnum opus from day one, strip it back. Make a simple platformer with just the core mechanic. Or a text adventure with just its incredible story. The first game you finish will almost certainly not be what you envisioned. The goal is to get that first one out of the way as quickly as possible to learn the whole process. That boost of shipping something, even if imperfect, is the best fuel for creativity. And all of this leads to the most important lesson I learned in four years at university. Finish what you start. The prototype loop is where beginner dreams go to die. It traps you in a cycle of starting, but never shipping. A short, simple GDD gives you something crucial. A finish line. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with prototype loop. It's a fantastic way to master coding and engine mechanics. And many developers already pointed out that it's their best way to learn. It just serves a different goal than my approach, which prioritizes understanding the full start to finish process of making a complete, albeit small game. When you don't know what done looks like, it's very difficult to reach it. As a side tip, once you have a little experience, joining game jams is a fantastic way to practice this. A game jam forces you to make a small, finished game in a short time, and it's one of the best ways to meet other developers, become part of the community, and get feedback on your games. So, here's the bottom line. GDDs only become harmful if they are static, oversized, or used as an excuse not to build. Use them smartly. Start small and finish what you start. The Reddit discussion was incredibly insightful, so now, I'm eager to hear what the YouTube game dev community thinks. What is your number one go-to piece of advice for a beginner starting their first game? Drop your advice in the comments below.
Remember, there is no single correct way to learn this stuff. So let's keep the discussion helpful and respectful. And I'll leave you with one final thought. A question to ask yourself after this video is over. What is the simplest version of your dream game that you could complete in one month? The answer to that question might just be your next finished project. Start smart, start small and I'll see you in the next one.